Hello, my name is Sophie Masson. I'm from the University of New England in New South Wales, Australia. And today my presentation is called Blurring the Lines, Authors and Publishers in the Small Press Sector in Australia. Um, the slides have got a lot more information that, than what I'm saying because, of course, this is a lightning talk. Um, but first of all, I want to define um, what a small press is. I mean, they're not part of multinationals. They pu generally publish between four and 20 books a year. They don't only publish books by directors or in-house staff. They, they publish a, a wide variety of authors and illustrators. They're not vanity presses. They don't charge authors to publish their work. They are independently owned and they're generally run by a small team. Now, small publishers are growing in number in Australia over the last five or six years. It's become quite a phenomenon. phenomenon. And um, the slide shows you some of the um, statistics, but um, it's, it is markedly, markedly changed. There's been quite an explosion in small press publishing houses setting up, um, principally to do with contractions in big publishers, uh, not so many books um, being taken on, um, and for a wide variety of reasons, including opportunities presented by the digitization of the printing process. Most of this is driven by print publishing, not e-books. The small press sector in Australia is growing in cultural and economic importance. Um, it's very prominent in literary prize lists. For instance, in 2017, the Prime Minister's Literary Awards, which are one of the most prestigious awards, had 80% of the books on the shortlist were from small press. And that's been a big change in the last three or four years. Similarly, for children and teenagers, um, there's been a marked rise in um, small press publishing for children's book of children's books. And um, that's been reflected um, very recently in short lists um, for Children's Literary Awards. Australian small press titles have been selling internationally. Um, those are just some of the titles that have sold quite well recently. Um, and more and more authors, both emerging and established, are now happy to work with small press. And you can see two of them there. Rebecca Fung, a debut author, and Ursula Dubisarski, a very well-known multi-award winning author, both of whom publish with the small press that I'm involved with, Christmas Press. Uh, but in small press publishing, the big thing is that the lines between author and publisher are often less clear. They're blurred. Um, and that's for various reasons. So sometimes small press publishing houses have been founded and are run by authors. They don't publish their own work uh, principally. They may publish one or two titles that are by themselves, but mostly they're publishing other people's work. So for them, it's very, very much um, cogent, um, that blurring of the lines when they have to change hats from author to publisher and vice versa. So they must negotiate new relationships and work out how best to, um, when to be an author, when to be a publisher, and how that can work within the business. Um, and there's, you'll see on the, on the slides, there's some quotes from interviews that I conducted with people who are both authors and publishers who run small presses. So sometimes those things are pleasurable discoveries and things work really well. Um, it's really interesting to see how other authors work and so on. For myself, as an author, a very well-established author who started a publishing house with a couple of um, emerging illustrators, that it has been a very much, very positive mainly. But for many people, it also creates tension, including for me, um, and some of that means also, you know, time management and so on, but it can also mean the tension of people who you've known as fellow authors who come to you as authors for your publishing house and who sometimes behave differently from what you expected. But not all small presses are headed by authors, of course. Um, some, but all, report a blurring of the lines, or most of them do, about with authors and illustrators tend to be a little bit more interventionist. They would be with bigger publishers and there can be tensions around that. But there are many positives, so anything, because the, the closer relationships, the more personal interaction means a more equal relationship, and often things can be worked out more easily. So potential issues and challenges in author-publisher relationship in small press are contract negotiation hurdles, clashing expectations, inexperience, inflexibility. But there's also a lot of positives, as you can see there, better communication, better creative control, and a more equal relationship. So as a conclusion, the blurring the lines can be a good thing, a very good thing, but it can also lead to difficult issues. The key element is respect on both sides. That is really, really important. 
Thank you for listening to my presentation. I hope you found it interesting.